So now we're in this digital display, and this is what I prefer the most, as you can see everything very clearly. And I don't mind this display at all, it is very crisp. So now let's take a look at some other functionalities. Let's first take a look at the inputs here. Remember this device, we can input voltages and uh, currents and also output voltage and current. On the input menu, we can see that we have the option for current syncing and input voltage. So there's not a whole lot here, but we do have some settings. Now there's a lot of uh, details here. Obviously, you have to really read through the manual to understand what they are. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, the manual is not that great. So some of these, you really have to just try them out. And uh, through trial and error, you can probably figure it out. So that's the input. And let me go out. So now let's go to output. On output side, you have quite a few more functionalities here, and this one, I believe, is for loop testing. You can output a 24 volts, and we'll see that in a little bit. To the left, we have a frequency output. Obviously, you have different frequency ranges. You can use this as a frequency generator, and you can also do PWM as well. So let's go to XMT. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but according to the manual, it is for passive current signal testing. And let's move to the voltage. Obviously, you can use this to output the voltage as well, which we will also see in a little bit. Of course, you can use this as a current source to output a current signal as well. Already, we can see quite a bit of functionality this meter provides. Let me see if there's anything else I forgot to show you that is interesting. Oh yeah, here you can see that we have a calibration for every single measurement here, and that's actually quite neat. If you have a precise enough meter, you can use that to calibrate this device as well by punching in your own numbers here. Okay, let's do some real-world measurement here. And for that, the first thing I want to do is to measure the output using this SG003A as my current source. For that, I set to output 0 to 24 milliamps, and I hooked up a current meter so we can monitor its output current. So let's go back and uh, let's turn on the output. Oh, we already have some residual current by the look of it, because the setting here is zero. I know the precision of this device, at least from the spec, is as it's a plus or minus five counts. So this is actually just within spec. Let me increase that by one. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it looks like it is okay. So let's just go to 0 0.01. It's a little bit out. Let's uh, do a 0 0.1. So that's okay. Let's uh, go to 1 milliamp. Two. Not bad. Four or five. So let's go up to 15. And the highest we can go is 25 or 24. Okay. So that is actually not bad at all. And even the simplest current output setting is actually confusing, because if you see here, we have a range. So I assume these are some of the quantization values. And I don't know why you would use that, but you could if you want. So for example, if we go back to output, we can change the actual setting. Let's see if I can figure this out. Yep, I can change that to range. Whoops, go up, I can change that to range. And if we change that to range, you will see that when we go back to the output, ah, we go back to the output, this actually becomes the 1200 value we saw earlier. The actual current is displayed down here. That's actually not your current. So I'm not sure why you would want to do this. For example, this 600 would be your 12 volts, but I don't know why you would choose this format versus the actual current format. So that is for current output. The next thing I want to do is to test this uh, voltage output. Let me change it to voltage, and I already swapped the leads here. And let's see, oh, by the way, so that is a loop voltage. For the current measurement right now, it's set at 12 volts. You can see it's not quite 12 volts. Nevertheless, that's the setting, I suppose. Let's take a look. We can change it to 24 volts. Nope, it didn't change. Let's go back. Why is that? Okay. So yeah, I have to get out of that manual for it to change. So now you can see the loop voltage is actually changed to 24 volts instead of 12. Okay, so now let's move on to the voltage setting here. And uh, we also want to just output the actual value. So let's go back. So now let's see how accurate the voltage is. Let's uh, turn it on. Let's do one, two, three. So, okay, so let's do 10 at a time. So it looks like there's some threshold under which it doesn't quite register, at least not consistently. So you saw that earlier we were at zero, and when we go when we go up to five, it's still showing 0 0.012, and at some point that number jumps. Yep. So it looks like actually the lowest quantization we can have is actually not the last digit here. It's probably 0 0.01 volts instead of the one millivolts here. So that's just my theory here. Actually, no. So when I press this, the last number changes too. At this lower voltage, it doesn't really seem to be that accurate. Change it back to zero, and we do one volt. And given what we're seeing here, it's really borderline of that 0.1% plus five counts accuracy here. Let's go up, two volts, three. It's actually not that bad, four volts, given that this device is really a sub-100 device. And this is actually quite impressive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, in a pinch, you can use this as your voltage reference, I suppose, 20 volts. So let's go all the way to the maximum. 21, 2, 3, 4. Hang on. 23, 24. Okay. 
I was just going to say that the 24 is a little bit out. By the look of it, it's not able to output into maximum voltage. 